All right, so Bernie Sanders in Wyoming. Uh, Linda, let me start with you. What are your thoughts on Bernie Sanders' victory in Wisconsin? Well, we really expected that he was going to win. I mean, the, the makeup of the landscape, uh, the electorate, the process, all of these things were really in Bernie Sanders' favor. And if you rewind back a few weeks when we were first talking about all of these upcoming races that we knew were going to either be caucuses or open primaries, we knew that he was probably going to win the next seven or so states, and he, and he has. The challenge for him remains that he's not winning these states in huge blowouts, and when you look ahead to the, um, the upcoming calendar, the situation doesn't look as great for him, and, and he's just got, you know, a steeper and steeper hill to climb as time goes on. As you well know, though, uh, Caitlin, the enthusiasm behind Senator Sanders has been interesting to watch. We saw a little bit of it there. We've seen it in other places. What do you make of that? Because, for instance, this figure here, young voters, you know, Bernie Sanders once again mm -hmm. demonstrating he has a connection with younger voters. Mm -hmm. Right. I think the momentum for Sanders, he's not, you know, keeping pace with the delegates, and that's, you know, strategically, practically, all these reasons uh, why they're a challenge for him. But I do think the momentum for him is important because it keeps him in this race, and that means that this race keeps going and that Hillary Clinton is not yet able to officially turn over to focus on the Republicans. It's completely understandable understandable why, why the Clinton campaign wants to put this away, because look at what's happening on the Republican side. Democrats want to uh, focus on that, be able to draw that contrast, which is becoming clearer by the day um, in terms of, of, of the party differences. Um, and so I think this keeps Sanders in the race. It helps him raise even more money, perhaps. He can keep going back to those small dollar donors. Hillary Clinton has to tap into new donors. She's maxed out on a lot, has to take time off the road to go fundraise. And so it just is, is not something that she, you know, would want to do, and that's understandable. This is a really important point that Caitlin raises, too, which is that Bernie Sanders is continuing to raise vast amounts of money. Six million grassroots donors ain't nothing to sneeze at. And in March, he outraised Hillary Clinton by $15 million. Uh, we know that the math isn't getting better for him, but we also know he's not going anywhere. He's not relinquishing his microphone anytime let's, let's soon. Let's give credit where credit's due. Did you think uh, three months ago that Hillary Clinton was going to have to go all in in New York, spending money campaigning mm -hmm. before the Wisconsin primary was, uh, was even held? She's in New York campaigning uh, because she needs to win the state that she represented in the Senate because of Sanders's quote momentum. And so, she's going back to her Senate playbook. I mean, when she well, right. she's kind of going back to the you know campaigning like she's campaigning for the Senate, which speaks to your point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I just want to go back to this notion of the the enthusiasm. Um, you know, Leslie, it's just been I can't help but repeat myself here, but the the connection um, that we have seen that's been consistent, right, with the Bernie Sanders supporters, while we've talked about the numbers and how the older voters are the more reliable voters, um, I, I wonder there, as, you know, we've talked about in the past trying to grow the Republican Party, and you see uh, here this real enthusiasm behind uh, Bernie Sanders. What are your thoughts uh, moving forward at a time when your front runner on the Republican sure. side has been so polarizing for some people. Sure, he's going to depress a vote in the minority communities for sure. Um, you know, I, 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 there's no doubt about it. We've been looking at Texas data that show particularly Donald Trump would underperform in Texas by significant margins, like by, by margins where people were traditionally getting almost 40 percent as Republicans, and they could just be, you know, you know, lo your local races, or in some cases, less lesser known statewide races. But Donald Trump performs eight points below them. So it, it is really just makes people take a, a beat because there's not a lot of state data to look at that can make that comparison to where is he where is he siphoning off its women and minorities. We know that. Um, and what's interesting that, that they that does not get talked about a lot when you're talking about minorities and kind of ethnic solidarity and voting that Bernie Sanders is basically able to evangelize and split the Latino coalition based on youth. He's getting a lot of Latino youth. So the, the older Latinos are going with Hillary Huge Clinton. Huge demographic. Exactly. Massive. And they're growing 50,000 new really critical girls demographic a day. if you don't get that vote. But the Democrats never thought that they would split within the party. Now, they may eventually come back in, right, because they overwhelmingly get Hispanic vote. But to see younger voters not want to get behind Hillary Clinton is a problem. It is a significant problem. It doesn't get talked about enough. For Republicans, we're just like to get out of the 25 percentile. We should be in the 40 percentile in terms of support. So where it's going to land, nobody knows. It's going to depend on the nominee. It's too, too early to tell. 
uh, I think the positive line in here is you still have a lot of minority Republican candidates who are not uh, in majority minority states. Like we're still running and winning in statewide offices. So we're, Republicans are winning in candidates. We're not winning in popular vote. And um, that's going to be something that's going to take at least 10 years to correct. Um, Steve, uh, let me ask you on the Democratic side here. Um, when you are uh, looking at, we've talked about enthusiasm, we've talked about mm -hmm. young people, um, but you're looking at some of the potential vulnerabilities here. We've talked about honest and trustworthiness, but are there ways in which Bernie Sanders' continued campaign is actually making Hillary Clinton a better candidate? The rhetoric, some of the um, themes that she's chosen to focus on, the ways in which she has um, gotten her finger on the pulse of what it is that Democratic voters want. Have we seen her change and perhaps sharpen some of her uh, rhetoric with Bernie Sanders continuing to be in the campaign? Yes, so I think in, uh, on one hand, uh, there's a sense that when she doesn't have real competition that she sort of gets in, she sort of starts to coast and she doesn't become as sharp uh, as a campaigner and as a candidate. The problem with Sanders still being in the race is he is forcing her to take positions uh, that are further to the left uh, than she normally would take if she was just worried about the general election at this point. Let's look at minimum wage for instance. Now minimum wage, uh, big issue in states like California, New York, blue states, great. She's all in, $15 an hour. Uh, it's not something that she was talking a lot about until the states passed those, those laws. But now she's a big fan of it. Now she's going to have to answer for that in a general election scenario. And there are going to be states, uh, purple states and red states, that might not agree with her on that $15 an hour mi minimum wage for whatever reason. And how is she going to square that, right? Uh, that's just the most latest, that's just the latest example of an issue that Sanders has pushed her further to the left. And so the longer he's in this race, the further left she's going to have to go in order to keep up with him or to beat, or to, or to beat him. And I think, uh, you know, the more polarizing you get, whether it's on the Democratic side or the Republican side, and we've already, it happens very early in the Republican primaries, it seems to have been the case the last several uh, primary uh, contests for Republicans, you get so polarized that to try to come back to the middle and appeal to uh, a general electorate becomes that much more difficult. Now, so I think in this case, the earlier Sanders gets out for her is, is going to be better for her in the long run uh, if she ultimately is the nominee. You wanted to weigh in, Sure. Leslie? I think when we're talking about New York, I think a really interesting phenomenon is you have a lot of disaffected and frustrated Democratic voters in the western part of the state. When you talk about everything from Rochester to Syracuse, she went and went, um, ran, when you're talking about her Senate campaign, I'm going to revitalize this area, I'm going to use my prowess as FLOTUS, you know, as, as a former first lady, to come in and really revitalize this part uh, because of the trade deals that went wrong, you know, and didn't really revitalize this part of the state. And none of that transpired. So there's a lot of angst and anxiety in that part of the state that she's going to really have to make up for. Yeah, what about that? What do you think about that, Linda? I mean, is that perhaps an area where that could be a trouble spot for her? Well, I mean, specifically on the trade issue, I mean, this speaks to what Steve, the point that Steve was making earlier. I mean, we know that when she was Secretary of State, she called the Trans-Pacific Partnership the gold standard. And because of this engagement with Bernie Sanders, she has since clarified her position on it to be, well, you know, it needed to meet <laughs> these bars for me, and it really hasn't, so I don't support it. And so, I mean, I think that that's definitely significant movement that you definitely wouldn't have seen otherwise if Bernie Sanders weren't in the race. That said, it feels like some of these larger issues, whether it's about minimum wage or trade, are things that are already out there. So I'm not sure that him continuing to talk about it is going to change the dynamics that dramatically. I think the bigger issue is what Caitlin said earlier, which is the longer he's in it, the less time she has to pivot towards the general, to focus on fundraising for the general, to start to really build the operation that's going to need to be different than the operation in the primary. Well, and let's look at a perfect example. She's going to fundraise for the general at George Clooney's house, which she's going to raise $350,000 a head, which that's just the way the, 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 this is set up this year. Yet who's hammering her on that? Right. Bernie Sanders. That's so she's right. trying to actually look ahead and actually raise money for the general election, and he's not letting her. And th that, again, gets in her way uh, if, uh, you know, ultimately she is the nominee. She's got this, uh, 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 you know, on her thorn in her side, if you want to call it that, which, you know, I'm not trying to diminish what Bernie Sanders is doing. I'm going to get yelled at on Twitter, but <laughs> I, I, Sanders is there and he's making points that are resonating with a lot of voters. Yet 
she obviously wants to move on from this yeah. and is not allowed to, and he's not letting her do it. They, right. they, they all want to move on. They all want to take, the, the yeah. Yeah. To take her of coronation and move on and right. do that. I'm so sorry, Bernie It's Sanders been enough. She, I think she, she was fine to do it <laughs> February, March. Okay, yeah. now it's been enough. April, well, it's no, not, it's not going to end anytime soon. She needs to understand that he's not getting out. Their way. Exactly. He's not going to get out. It yeah. is interesting, exactly. though, that the Sanders campaign basically all 15 of their highest level staffers participated in this New York Times story just a couple days ago, essentially yeah. throwing in the towel, saying, you know, if we had just done 2015 differently, well, we would be better off. It's an interesting story because they were basically admitting that what they're doing now they should have done earlier, which is going after her hard, really hitting her on, on Wall Street and, and the email stuff and the honesty and trustworthiness. They, they held off on that for the longest time. And they're looking, they are looking and admitting that the delegate math is a, a hill that they cannot they cannot overcome. They are admitting that. They've admitted it. Jeff Weaver, the campaign manager, has said we're taking this to the, to the convention and we're going to flip super delegates, b basically because they can't get the the pledge delegate number. And that you listen to all these people in that article, and they're all basically saying we should have done X, Y, and Z earlier, because if we did that earlier, we would have won more states, or we would have had a better done a better job in terms of picking up delegates earlier on, and this would have been a much closer contest now. That was admitted in the New York Times. Right, so which, we can get way, yelled at by Sanders supporters, but his own people were on the record in the New York Times saying this basically. Yeah, last that's week. right. I mean, by the way, what they're saying might actually be true. I mean, the numbers might be different at this point in the calendar had they done things differently, had Bernie Sanders. Had he not seated the email things. issue in that debate last year, which was right. a pivotal moment. Right. And I remember watching that moment and saying, this is it. He can't talk about emails anymore. He's just taking it off the table. Later on, I think they're realizing that was probably not the, the right. And move. Even right? Hillary Clinton supporters in that article pointed to, to when he talked about, you know, the Wall Street uh, money that she received. Mm -hmm. If he had brought that up earlier, that was brought to him by his campaign reportedly, and he said no. So what's interesting now is we're hearing more about Bernie Sanders talking about how he wants to be more than just a movement. Um, he wants to be uh, the nominee. Um, and so that's going to just keep him in this race for as long as he can. And we saw her react to uh, the stuff about, um, uh, you know, funding of her, her super PAC accepting money from um, a fossil fuel industry and all of that. We saw her react to that. Um, if Bernie Sanders continues these kinds of attacks, you know, that she also risks um, just getting, you know, visibly tired of it. You know, I mean, it's just, interesting because you're talking about uh, the movement. And I see, I've gotten my own tweets, you know, and, and uh, you know, where the movement is coming. And they, they continue, <laughs> they just remind me, thank you. You know who you all are. But um, there you go, all the hashtag Bernie Sanders. But the, but the, the, the interesting part about that whole thing is is now he's saying, exploding. yeah, the phone is exploding. <laughs> now they're saying oh, we can be the nominee, right? Before it was just kind That's of this right. thing, we're going to change candidate. and go protest mm -hmm. candidate, mm -hmm. we're going to change the platform, we're going to you know, make our points known and income inequality. Now, wait a minute, now we can be the nominee. So all of these individuals are getting those tweets and those mm -hmm. texts and, you know, the, the fundraising apparatus that's yeah. saying, let's do that. And I, and I always go back to this point that hope dies last. Uh, the hope is an uprising, right? As long as there is hope among the individuals who support Bernie Sanders, who fundamentally believe that is now their new target, getting, squashing that is going to be extremely difficult because now they're changing the tactics in terms of how much harder they're willing to work. I, yeah. I do think it was, like the thing that was most stunning to me about that article though was not just all the blind quotes from the senior leadership <laughs> and whatnot, but some of the on the record quotes where essentially his top advisors are just throwing him under the bus. Mm -hmm. If he'd only listened to me, <laughs> we would be better off right it was, now. It was it's a postmortem about something that it's, it's not, not dead yet. yet. It's not dead yet. It's not over yet. In fact, yeah. it's very, very much alive. Right. Yet there was a post mortem. Exactly. <laughs> right.